Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Jess Bear with Jess Bear Chats. Happy 420 to all who celebrate this very important day. Uh, <laughs> um, I know that uh, my husband has enjoyed some very delicious special brownies today. And uh, I might partake in some later as well. For well, I don't have to even say it's for medicinal purposes anymore, right? Yeah, California. Anyway, uh, so... I posted my first video online and, uh, you know, I, I had a couple of positive reactions from friends and family, uh, but my friend Jan, who also provided a positive critique, uh, you know, said, hey, you know, great job, but you called yourself poor and, you know, I just want you to know that if you, if you call yourself poor, then you're going to attract poverty. And if you change your dialogue to just all you need, all your needs will be met, uh, then you're going to attract abundance into your life. So thank you, Jan, for that awesome comment. And I had a couple of reactions. First of was, I, I was just, I, was, I wasn't even responding to anything. I was just admitting a fact about my life and a way that people could possibly respond to me because they might also recognize that they are not what is considered rich <laughs> um, in financially speaking uh, so so that was weird and also it's like what's so wrong about calling yourself poor well, you know wh what what problem is there in admitting that and recognizing that under federally mandated guidelines I'm considered a poor person. So it got me thinking and it also got me to researching a little bit about this because I've heard this line of uh, magical thinking uh, in many different contexts and so I was hoping to maybe get a little background on it and maybe expand a little more about why I feel uneasy with it and finally talk about you know how I see my personal spiritual beliefs um, uh, working in this idea of what poverty is and what um, abundance is so so I did a little digging on Wikipedia and found out a little more about this law of attraction um, apparently it's been around since the early early 1900s, late 1800s, but some people say that various lines of thought have been going on since the Renaissance. Um, but in particular, it was penned and put down as new thought um, in uh, the 1900s um, by a fellow uh, who had been diagnosed with t tuberculosis and there weren't really any treatments for tuberculosis at that time he was in a lot of pain but what he found was when he went exercising he would uh, go ride his horse or um, uh, do some sort of outdoor activity excitement and being outdoors and all that would decrease his level of pain and so he essentially penned the idea of mind over matter where if you think good and positive thoughts, if you believe that you are not going to have pain, then you're not going to have pain. Um, and overall, your life is going to be better for that. This kind of spun off into a whole bunch of different success uh, books. Uh, one of them was called The Science of Getting Rich. Uh, it was written in 1910, and that book was uh, directly responsible more well okay maybe not directly responsible but the author who penned uh, the secret um, was inspired by that book so so we have some lines in that there is also connections with a lot of um, the New Age and Wicca folks. I don't know if this is a part of the theology. I only know that I seem to see it and hear it a lot in local um, uh, pagan and spiritual community groups. 
as well as in larger um, bodies of literature and social media. So something about the idea of positive and negative thoughts are derived from pure energy from our mind and those good vibes and bad vibes can basically uh, affect our physical form and things that are outside of our physical body. So if I think I'm going to be poor for all of my life, then I am not only going to be poor, but I am also going to have a bunch of really bad stuff happen to me that will even like further cement that I'm going to be poor rather or I would think that I'm going to that I am rich I am a rich person and therefore I will be able to see abundance and riches come into my life so there is also a, a not as great thread that connects to prosperity theology and prosperity gospel which I'm sure you may have heard have but basically the idea is if someone believes in God with a capital G um, with strong enough faith and they prove that faith by sending money in to their favorite pastor or their favorite church then God will bless them with even more uh, wealth um, than they provided right so um, obviously we see this taken to extreme levels of frankly con artists and scammers who swindle poor people out of very little money that they have in order to uh, keep three or four you know private jets and several uh, mansions all over the world whereas the poor people still stay poor um, and I think that's one of the first things that I have an issue with with this idea of um, law of attraction is that it is basically a band-aid it's a way to actually not a band-aid it's it's papering over the real issues that surrounds a person's life. We, you know, uh, in America, we have been probably, you know, brainwashed since birth, since we've been able to comprehend language that if you work hard and you get a college education, then you're going to have a good life. You're going to be successful. You're going to have money. You're going to have a car. You're going to have a house that you're going to be able to pay. You're going to have a family. All those things are you know guaranteed that was what I was taught when I was growing up obviously the reality is far from that right and no matter how much work and no matter how much positive thinking that you may have unless you have prosperity already banked for you um, chances are you are not going to see the level of wealth that we have seen in previous generations so, uh, but we still hear it, right? We still hear that, oh, well, either, either you're not working hard enough or you're just looking at the situation wrong. And if you think that you're poor now, well, if you keep thinking that, you'll never get anywhere and you're going to be in the same job and for the rest of your life. And how horrible is that going to be? I think that this is really just a way to deflect the the deeper societal issues that we have the problems of lack of social security nets for people who do uh, hit lower poverty levels but also people who have been working all of their lives people who work one two three jobs in order to barely maintain a apartment and to barely be able to feed and clothe themselves much less if they have children 
I think it's uh, a scapegoat and it's a way to put the blame on the person who is working at these horrible poverty level jobs um, that oh well you know it's your fault because you didn't work hard enough you didn't think hard enough you didn't put enough into your education um, so I think that it's a very insidious and slippery slope um, to just saying nope it's just your fault and there's nothing we can do as a society to help you so so that that's basically one of my biggest beefs just on the practical and realistic side of this law of attraction this law of or the idea of positive thinking um, in this way um, also I don't think that in my spiritual tradition and this is just what I have seen so far I'm still a student I'm still learning um, most of what I have read um, uh, from the text as well as learning from amazing teachers uh, like Laura O'Brien, John O'Sullivan, um, the, uh, the Temple of the Morgan uh, folk in Oakland, Morgan Daumler, um, Story Archaeology, which is a podcast. If you have never listened to, you really should if you're interested in Irish um, stories and myths and a little bit of culture as well um, is that it's not in t I don't think there's anything that says that oh well this person just didn't pray hard enough or they didn't leave the right offering or um, you know they didn't um, do worship se sessions enough and that's why this thing happened. What I've noticed the most in the myths is that one, things are based on cycles. Um, a new thing is created or born, it grows, it changes, and then things start to break down, things suddenly aren't working, and it can come down to either a good and gentle end or a chaotic end where a new thing then comes in its place or it starts over again maybe having learned from the previous mistakes so so there's that there's this element of um, Mark Twain said it that you know history doesn't repeat itself but it often rhymes and that there's there are patterns in human society and behavior in our different cultures that continue to happen over and over again sometimes because we never learn from our mistakes or we don't learn our history but another is that is a part of human nature um, that we'll see you know things move in one direction then then change and go in a different direction um, but another important aspect that I've seen in um, the stories is that yes there is a ritual aspect there's magical aspects um, and there is spiritual aspects but there's also a lot of work that goes into creating or changing things um, you may have read it somewhere in that Christian book called the Bible uh, that faith without works is dead and in the same kind of vein it feels to me that um, in the stories of the Irish um, it's good to to have a belief in something but it's also it's even better when you actually work for it and you do something finally another aspect of those stories in particular having to do with my uh, uh, the God that I'm dedicated to on Dagda is the idea of what is uh, a balanced and right relationship um, with ourselves and our community and in this particular instance I'm thinking of um, talked about in the uh, Kathmai Torid um, pardon my mispronunciation um, is 
that he is the keeper of a cauldron from the city of Murius. And this cauldron uh, provides satisfaction to everyone who comes to it. And the, the actual line is, uh, um, hold on, let me check. Uh, whoever comes to it will not leave unsatisfied. So what is satisfaction? I'm sure we could look up the textbook dictionary idea of it, but for me, it's a feeling and a cessation. It's a feeling of a full belly and a full life, that I'm getting things done, that I'm, I'm content in the work that I'm doing, and that I'm in a good place, right? Um, so being able to recognize that, though, is has been an effort of me learning about myself, about what I need, about who I am, and how I can take care of myself. With that, once I'm able to establish those things, once then it can become a thing of, well, um, what's the next right thing? What's the next best thing I can do for myself? Um, and then for the people around me. Um, I don't take it as a very selfish thing at all. I, I do see that when we take care of ourselves, we have the energy and the power to take care of each other. So, but you gotta be, you gotta be well. You have to be feeling okay and right. And so, so that's what a lot of my relationship with Andagda is, is recognizing what part of the cycle am I in for myself and how do I keep and maintain satisfaction in my life? And how can I then offer that to others? How do I offer that to my community? I'm a very empathetic person. I've always been. I care deeply about people I've never met, if you tell me a story about them. Um, and so that really drives me recognizing them as other human beings in need and who have lived through things that either I have been through or things I could imagine never living through, like just beyond my comprehension. And I want to try and help and be of use. And that's my work. My work is to provide for my community um, and to help my community um, also feel this abundance, this satisfaction in life, despite what their financial situation is. And, and, and because of it, you know, I think when we, re we rely too much on the financial aspect, then we're neglecting our relationships with, with people that could help fill in the gaps of what, you know, finances can't provide. So, so yeah. So when I have abundance, and sometimes it's a dollar, sometimes it's an hour of my time helping to um, take groceries to somebody or doing lawn work or um, listening to somebody talk when they've experienced something that's hurtful or painful or if it's good news. But providing that resource and time for other people means that I can get that back in return someday. I don't expect it, um, but I do believe that if I've already been given abundance, I'm not going to keep it when I'm dead, so I should give it back out. It's as simple as that. And I, I do see that in the cycles, too, in relation to the Irish myths, is that you, you can build up wealth for so long, but then you do have to give it back. And if you keep it for yourself, that's when things start breaking down. That's when relationships and civilizations fall. And, uh, and that's something we should be aware of.
So, so I think that's it. Um, I hope I've covered that well enough. And I know it's a lot, but basically, yeah, law of attraction um, is not really for me. Obviously, I'm not saying positive or negative thinking is bad, and I'm not saying if you believe that, that's wrong. But for me and what I practice, it it does seem counterintuitive, and it doesn't really work um, in working with with my community and providing a satisfying life for myself and others. So, yeah. Thank you again for coming to Just Bear Chats. This has been a fun exercise, and I really liked being able to work off of somebody's comments or suggestions, so I'm willing to and open to listening to what you have to say. Do you have something that you're interested in as far as um, being a American uh, uh, who is trying to work an Irish pagan path or a Celtic path? Are you a queer trans person who is trying to find a spiritual fit? Are you wanting to explore more about where spiritualism, you know, combines with our activism and our society? I don't know. You want to learn about, you know, I don't know. Anything, really. I'm up for it. This is always fun. I love talking. So, <laughs> so give me a reason to talk. Um, if you like what I'm doing and you do want to financially support, I do have a uh, Ko-fi or Ko-fi uh, account that I'll put a link to um, in the comment section. You can just buy me a cup of coffee as a thank you and uh, tell your friends. And uh, until we meet again, may you be safe, warm, and well-fed.